Animal Jam is a massive multiplayer online experience developed by Wildworks that came out in September 2012. In this game, targeted towards kids up to the age of 12, players would explore the setting of Jamar, adopt pets, play games, decorate their dens and go on numerous adventures. However, since 2016, Animal Jam has been on the decline, averaging less than 5% of the monthly searches that the game had at its peak. So, what led to the downfall of this once hugely popular game? What drama went on behind the scenes? What secrets did Jamar hold? And what the hell is that thing? In this deep dive, we're going to be covering YouTubers being banned for insider trading, the intricacies of the world's lore, a ghost jammer that haunted players for years on end, and how the original idea for Animal Jam is shockingly different from the game we know and love today. Buckle up, because this is the Animal Jam Iceberg. The way this iceberg works is we'll start at the tip with things that people who have played Animal Jam at some point in their childhood will most likely know, gradually getting more and more obscure with every layer we link into, until ultimately we reach the dark, dark depths, where, if you know everything down there, I'll either be immensely impressed or catastrophically concerned. It depends. I've also tried something new with this iceberg by adding a key. All topics in green are things that exist in the game itself, whilst the orange ideas are to do with the community surrounding Jamar, with red finally being everything behind the scenes of Animal Jam. Now, with no further delay, let's go like a dolphin and dive into this. Alpha HQ is the base of operations for the Alphas, the heroes of Animal Jam. This building appeared in place of the old club geos after mysterious lines of power appeared across Jamar. Initially, the HQ was released unofficially as the Mushroom Den Test, likely to be, as implied, a test for the new room. The museum area upstairs also had holes for gems, with some still remaining empty, hinting that there was more to come in the future. And speaking of the mysterious Alphas... The Alphas, in this case, have nothing to do with cringe Andrew Tate TikToks, but instead protect and serve Jamar from threats such as the Phantoms. There are dozens of noted Alphas, however the action one in the game's primary lore included Liza the Panda, Cosmo the Koala, Graham the Monkey, Sir Gilbert the Tiger, Peck the Bunny, Greeley the Wolf, and joining them later on, Tavi the Dolphin. The original six were given special jewels to enhance their powers, and despite officially joining the team, Tarvi did not get an armor set in the Alpha HQ. There are 37 other listed inactive Alphas which do not appear in-game, but do have various den items dedicated to them. These include Harper, Otto, Ruby, Cornelia, Sophia, Marco, Edmund, Amelia, Lucille, Sigard, Valentina, Atlas, Hudson, Jay, Biff, Boomer, Olive, Calypso, Victor, Drake, Barrett, Avalon, Andy, Felicity, Coco, Mika, Dakota, Vey, Jamal, Jarvis, Manny, Carmen, Perry, Felix, Aurora, Star, Fang. And if any of those were your name, I'd really appreciate a like. Impressively, that only took me two takes. <laughs> oh, I'm built different. The mysterious, black, oily, tentacle-covered enemies of Jamar, the Phantoms, have a heinous taste for needless destruction across Jamar. Herbert wanted warmth, Dr. Strangeglove wanted revenge, Dr. Hare wanted carrots, but the Phantoms? They only wanted suffering. These are the primary antagonists of the Animal Jam universe and appear in the majority of the minigames with an extremely mysterious backstory that will unravel later. They cause chaos, can't spell, and love candy. However, in September 2016, the Pet Phantom was released, allowing for a friendly lump of tentacly oil to follow you around. Adorable! Also, the plushies are so cute! Online children's games aren't truly one of the genre without an empire of merchandise and Animal Jam saw no reason to be any different. 
You can get shirts, figures, plushies, stickers, cards, books, top trumps, charms, comics, banners, bags, towels, balloons, as well as subscription boxes that came filled with amazing stuff. And to top it all off and show the other games who was boss, they even appeared in Happy Meals. Which, actually, when you think about it, that's kind of backwards to the message they were trying to promote. You know, protecting the environment, animal welfare, that kind of thing. Breaking the Bridge relates to the urban myth of Jamar that if enough players at once jumped on the bridge in Coral Canyons, it would collapse, possibly allowing you to fall into a secret room. Whilst this did appear possible at first, as the more players that joined in, the more parts of the rock would fall. However, it was never actually possible to completely shatter the bridge. No matter what YouTube thumbnails tried to make you believe. In Mount Shiver, there was also ice that would have similar animations, but would never actually break. However, Club Penguin made it possible to flip the iceberg when it closed down. Could the same be done when Animal Jam completely closes? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Finally, on the tip, we come to the Basement of Secrets. Or, not so secret, since it's on the first layer of the iceberg. The Basement of Secrets is a secret basement in a secret location known as the Chamber of Knowledge, only discoverable by clicking on an unmarked area on the map, and was never even officially announced by Animal Jam HQ. Despite being released in January 2016, seven and a half years ago, the only public mention from the team was in a post from the French version of the Animal Jam blog, The Daily Explorer, which gave a hint to the location's whereabouts. Strangely though, this post was soon deleted, and the mysterious basement full of strange artifacts has never officially been mentioned again. But when I keep secret stuff in my basement, suddenly I'm the bad guy. When you sign up to Animal Jam, you can choose from an ever-evolving list of animals to play as. But one animal caused more controversy than any other. The Ostrich. Similar to Minecraft Live's mob votes, Animal Jam hosted a poll for the next animal to be added in January of 2016 between the Falcon, the Sloth, and of course, the Ostrich. The Falcon won getting swiftly added in April of the same year. And then the sloth was also added just a few months later in July. But the ostrich? Despite all the posts and fan art and all the fans eager to see it in game? Nothing. Until eventually Animal Jam Play Wild introduced the ostrich. But that took all the way until November 2019, almost four years after the vote. And it was never released on Animal Jam Classic, making penguins the only flightless bird in that game. No ducks, no chickens, not even kiwis. What a truly tragic tale. Having millions of users data always makes you a target for hackers, and unfortunately Animal Jam was no different. October 10th to October 12th 2020, the servers of Animal Jam were breached for a third-party software Wildworks used for internal communication, revealing over 30 million players' information, including emails, usernames, birthdays, and billing addresses. Thankfully, only 0.02% of the breached account had the billing addresses included, but that still amassed to over 12,000 addresses. What makes this breach so unique, though, is that it wasn't actually detected by Animal Jam for over a month until after it happened, where some of the data was found on an underground forum for sale. After learning of this, all parents were made aware and all passwords were reset. Thankfully, it does not appear that anything further occurred from this. Magenta items were some of the rarest in the world of Animal Jam, and not by design. It's suspected that in development of all in-game items, they are magenta-based to be later coloured accordingly. Magenta items occur when an item is accidentally released before being coloured. 
typically being removed and replaced within a few hours, making them extremely valuable and rare amongst players. Strangely, in 2019, the Animal Jam YouTube account livestreamed with giveaways for a magenta hat that had previously been in the game for a few hours in 2014. This new item is referred to by the community as the fake version of the hat, with the only difference being the shade of white on the snowflake on that hat. There are also rumours of a full magenta fairy hat, but I couldn't verify anything further on this item. The Lost Jammer. The hero Brian of Animal Jam. Except the Lost Jammer actually existed. Or did they? Rumours state that the Lost Jammer was once a regular player that got scammed in a trade, vowing that for the rest of his days he would hack the Animal Jam database to get information to find the one that wronged them. Others thought he was a disgraced Animal Jam employee, lost after their firing, and in a fit of vengeance used their existing knowledge to access other players' accounts. Dark fur, darker than you could choose. Small eyes, almost like two stars gazing through the endless abyss. Their den was said to be an empty room with a singular orange rug in the center. And one day, a username was finally linked to the lost jammer. Decompose. Players knew they had to get to the bottom of this mystery. So, naturally, they took up witchcraft. Three tiki torches in a triangle. One painted pot in the center. Change yourself into a wolf, the same as the mysterious spectre himself. And repeat. I summon the lost jam. I summon the lost jam. I summon the lost jam. Announced in 2019, the minds behind Animal Jam announced a brand new game known as Feral. This game was a reality show for mythical creatures and animals where you could complete quests and explore different worlds competing in new minigames in order to get the most points. If you haven't heard of this game before, you might think like me. This sounds really fun. Where can I play it? Well, you can't. In February of 2022, the feral site shut down overnight. No notice, no warning, no nothing. Just an announcement in the Discord server. When fans were confused and wanted more info, some of the remaining admins on the Discord server started being rude and nasty to the fans. We'll get into the possible reason behind the shutdown further down the iceberg, but it starts with an N and ends in a T. The little F hiding in the middle. On a more positive note though, Forever, an emulator to play Veril was created for those fans that love the game and those like me that never got a chance. The game is still having regular updates and events and I'll be checking it out myself on the channel soon too. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. This script is over 6,000 words long, so I'd appreciate any support you'd be willing to give. Jambassadors are a really cool inclusion in Animal Jam that I wish other games such as Moshi Monsters and Club Penguin implemented, but I also understand why they didn't. Essentially, content creators that primarily made Animal Jam content were selected by the developers themselves and made into brand ambassadors. Jambassadors. These people were often given items for in-game giveaways such as plushies of themselves alongside rare items from a holiday contest as seen in 2021. There have been dozens of Jambassadors throughout the past, such as Degley Jones, who quit, Beppa, who is still around to this day, and some like Sefi, who just completely disappeared without a trace. Could it have been the Lost Jammer? But believe it or not, there are still several Jambassadors to this day, including Seven Nut, Cherry Fizz, and Awesome Is Me. Apparently, being humble isn't one of the requirements. All these Jambassadors can be found on Instagram or YouTube. Surprisingly, there's no TikTok Jambassadors yet. Is that a, a gap in the market somewhere? The Guardian Spirits are the gods of Animal Jam. Legend has it that Zeos created the universe and in turn created Mira, another Guardian Spirit, and his lover. Together, the two of them created the world of Jamar, the Alphas, 
and the Heartstones, which gave special powers to each of the species. Never seen in the game in the flesh, or whatever a deity is actually made out of. Zeos was only known by Mira, who loved him deeply, but it is speculated upon whether this love was reciprocated, and this relationship would sadly not last forever. After the pair had parted ways, the phantoms came and wrecked havoc across the land of Jamar, with the help of all the animals collected from foreign lands, with their powers granted from the stones, the phantoms were able to be defeated, but not before subduing and capturing Zeos, taking him back to their dark world. Mira saw this and followed them through the portal, and neither of them were to ever be seen again. Whilst the Dead in the full release of both Animal Jam and Play Wild weren't small by any means, in the beta, a den was actually shown with two floors, a basement, plus a larger overall floor plan. Additionally, there were also numerous items like the claw machine or the porch swing. When the game came out of beta, these all ceased to exist without a trace. Why was this? To save data? Because basements are scary? I don't know. Summoning the lost jammer in the basement sounds like it'd be pretty cool to me. Before we submerge ourselves deeper, we can't forget about the AJU, the Animal Jam universe, with all the crazy spin-offs from the initial Animal Jam game. Of course, Animal Jam, later dubbed Animal Jam Classic, was the first, followed in 2013 by Tunnel Town, a city-building mobile game where you build up an underground bunny family. And just a few months later, Animal Jam Jump came out, which was essentially Doodle Jump, but with kangaroos. Good eye, mate. Got some shrimp on the barbie, are ye? Good on ya. Two years later, Animal Jam Play Wild came out on iOS and Android, which is a 3D version of the original Animal Jam Classic, and was later rebranded as simply Animal Jam, as Classic slowly stopped being updated as regularly. In 2020, this new version of Animal Jam was released on PC. Finally, in 2018, Dash Tag was released, which was similar to Temple Run or Subway Surface. The aim of this game was to collect as many animals as possible whilst escaping Misha, the panda. Quickly going back to that TikTok Jambassador thing I mentioned earlier, you could just use Dash Tag instead of Subway Surface under your Family Guy clips, and you're instantly getting millions of likes. This was meant to be an iceberg, but instead I'm just giving you a tutorial on how to get TikTok famous. Please remember me when you go in the boxing ring. AJW, also known as the Animal Jam Whip, is one of the most popular Animal Jam blogs from the game's peak. Run by Narfia9, the Whip would post tips and tricks in the game, spark discussions about updates and opinions in the game's lore, and even do giveaways. The blog stopped having frequent posts in late 2018, however Narfia still posts updates every few months about their life and how they're doing at college with their journalism, public relations and political science majors. They even posted as recently as last month, June 2023. It's so awesome seeing the community live on even to this day. Another massively popular blog site was Animal Jam Archives, where they would post guides, updates, codes, as well as high quality assets and images. Unlike AJW, the archives is run by a team headed by Snowy Claw and is still getting regular updates to this day, covering prototype figures being discovered, showcases on new items in the shops, lists of removed features and obscure facts, and so much more. If you like this video and want more Animal Jam knowledge, I'll link both of these sites below for you to check out once this video is over. Cool drama alert! Cool drama alert! There is drama in the Animal Jam YouTube community. Animal Jam was a booming genre on YouTube in the mid-2010s, with Scorn being one of the largest. One day, without warning, Scorn was banned from Animal Jam, along with YouTubers Typical Rocky and Jershi. After the backlash and questions from fans, AJHQ came out and responded by informing the community that these YouTubers had been selling in-game items on eBay for real money which was strictly against the terms of service. Scorn specifically admitted that the items he sold were given to him by fans during live streams. And the ban wasn't permanent, so after the apology, Scorn was just reinstated. 
right? Nope. Selling in-game items for real-life money results in a lifetime ban, as it should with the game having such a young player base. And when Scorm found this out, he wasn't a happy bunny. I don't know if he was a bunny, he could have been a wolf. He went on a tirade about how Apari, another Animal Jam YouTuber, was responsible for telling AJHQ to make the bans permanent, which Apari strongly denies. Fast forwarding to now, Scorm has completely left YouTube for the past few years, not uploading Animal Jam content for over four years, as well as rebranding to Hyper HD. And Apari recently made a comeback and started posting again just a few months ago as the most subscribed Animal Jam channel. They even have more than the official Animal Jam channel itself. Now that is crazy. Typical Rocky was able to create a new account from what I can tell and posted Animal Jam content for another year or two before deciding that they were too old for it. They've briefly made videos on the Feral Beta but haven't uploaded in only three years. In 2018, Jershi made an Instagram post saying that he was coming back to YouTube but to pursue Fortnite rather than Animal Jam. However, now, in 2023, it appears both his YouTube and Instagram accounts have been wiped from the planes of existence. The Lost Jammer? Was it the Lost Jammer? Please tell me it's the Lost Jammer. Aside from having such a public outrage about his banning, there are other things I've seen online that I can find no solid evidence for, so take what you see on screen right now with a grain of salt and a huge allegedly. If you have any more info on this, I'd love to hear it from you in the comments. After that more down topic, we've got something brighter. One of Animal Jam's earliest den items, Cammy's Frog, was an adorable little plush frog that came out in 2010 during beta testing. In Play Wild, Cammy's Frog was released again in 2016 as a rare plushie, with three different variants. The original rare frog, green with a pink belly, Cammy's Frog with a PH that was only available between May and July 2019 from the Phantom Dimension, that was completely purple, and the Alpha Kami's Frog, released in 2021 with a white belly and only having 830 of them in circulation. But why is this frog so important? During development, one of the Animal Jam team had a daughter suffering with leukemia, a cancer of the blood. A plush frog was her favourite toy, so it was implemented into the game for her. Kami, the daughter, survived the cancer and later went on to feature in the educational videos in the Wild Explorer's Tent in 2016. See, isn't that better than some losers scamming kids? Did you know that in the original version of Animal Jam, there was actually a feature known as the Play Timer? This was a tool set up by parents to cap the amount of time their kid could play per day. Once the timer ran out, they would be logged out and wouldn't be able to log in until the timer was reset. Despite this feature being removed in 2012, I find it funny to think about if this was implemented today, where three-year-olds can use iPads better than me. So honestly, most kids with half a brain cell would probably be able to work around this time limit anyway. Fman122 was another mythical figure around Animal Jam, but in a very different way to the Lost Jammer. There'll be rumours of him sending players of Jamagrams, the equivalent of postcards in Club Penguin, and once they were opened, he hacked them. But was F-Man real, or were they just a rumour? Could you really hack someone with Jamagrams? Whilst the evidence suggests that this is just another urban legend, it wasn't the only hacking story in Animal Jam. Wretch the Jungle appeared exactly one year after the initial F-Man hacks banning users every 30 seconds until the servers went down completely to fix this. Even hugely popular creators were hacked during this event, known as The Repeat, with it being the anniversary of F-Man. Despite this whole ordeal lasting only two days, this was a major event in Animal Jam's hacking history that was actually claimed by Mighty Squad, a hacking group. However, no proof for this was ever provided. My personal theory is that this was simply an F-Man copycat. After seeing all the creepypastas made about them, they wanted a bit of that Animal Jam fame. Animal Jam Academy was an online website directly linked to Animal Jam Classic that focused on teaching science, technology, engineering, and if you know STEM, then you know what the fourth one is. Art. 
This was done through quizzes, DIY projects, fun activities and colouring pages. All educational, as that was one of Animal Jam's initial missions. To educate young people about the world and the environment. During the peak of Animal Jam, a website was discovered by players only intended for Wildworks employees and admins, where login details could be entered and currency or items could be given to certain players. Whilst Wildworks were very quick to take this page down, many players still claimed that they were too fast and were able to add currency and items to their accounts, but no drastic differences were felt in the game from this. To this day, it's still speculated on how this page was discovered in the first place. The Lines of Power were a series of glowing lights that started appearing throughout Jamar as early as 2015, but weren't officially acknowledged all the way until 2017. These ominous glowing lights completely obliterated Club Geo's, the Jamar nightclub, after the destruction the Alpha HQ was constructed in its place, with the Lines of Power disappearing as fast as they initially appeared. Theory surrounded the Lion's source of power. Was it to do with the Jamar Eclipse or the revival of Seos's statue? Maybe, we'll just never know. All right, back to hackers. Astro Squad were infamous in the Animal Jam community, but not for hacking accounts, purely for sound hogging. Sound hogging, for those unfamiliar, is where somebody spams sound effects over and over so you can no longer comprehend what's happening in game, typically through exploits or third party programs. Some players found this funny, but many found it annoying and disruptive. Astro Squad went on to start selling in game items for real money as well. However, their Discord invite no longer works, so whether they're still up and running, I have no idea. So, whilst they didn't steal any accounts or leak any information, I'm going to put my opinion in here for this. If you're sound hogging, being generally toxic and selling in-game items for money on a game primarily targeted towards kids, touch some fucking grass and get a grip. Masterpieces are artwork created by different players using the Animal Jam paint tool that could be implemented as an actual in-game den item once approved by moderators. However, some users found a way to convert any online image into an AJ art file, the file type used for masterpieces. This spawned a pandemic of fake masterpieces with players able to literally put the Mona Lisa in their home. Once Animal Jam HQ realized what was happening, they disabled masterpieces completely for any users suspected of using this exploit, as well as patching it so that the software used to convert the files no longer worked. After Feral, fans of Wildworks wondered, what was next? Well, if you guessed literally Feral again, but with NFTs, you'd be bang on the money. Although it would be very, very weird if you managed to guess that. Cinder was a brand new version of Feral that had less content and required an NFT to play that started up as soon as Feral closed down. So soon, in fact, that they actually had to reopen Feral for three hours because fans pointed out that Wildworks' own TOS stated that they could not shut the game down without any notice. The reason this caused so much controversy, aside from the obvious, is because Animal Jam was created in partnership with National Geographic, which promoted the health and sustainability of the environment. In the Animal Jam journal, it even stated that cryptocurrency uses up a fast amount of energy generating extreme amounts of pollution, therefore contradicting the initial mission statement Wildworks has set up with their fans in the first place. Despite the servers of Cinder closing down in March of 2023, the NFTs are still on sale today, going anywhere from 0.1 sol, $2, to 110 sol, $2,200, with one exception, costing 1,000 sol, or $20,000. I don't get it. That's that's common. Why is it so much? However, only one sale has occurred in the last six months and only at 0.03 sol, equaling out at only 60 cents. I guess if you go greedy, betray your ethics 
and showing NFTs and cryptocurrency to your fans, then karma's gonna catch up with you sooner or later. The game ended up shutting down due to a split between Wildworks and a subsection that later became Cinder Studios, who appeared to be working on a brand new game called Oust, which was weirdly announced just days before Cinder was abandoned. Oust is a 2D RPG PvP style game that sees you start as a peasant trying to gain support to overthrow the king. Then, as the new king, you must maintain your power. There's a really good metaphor somewhere in there. I'll leave that for you to find. Hyene One was a prominent artist in Animal Jam's peak, who first hit the roads of controversy when they were accused of tracing other artists' work. Then, for being rude to staff, before allegedly telling other users to kill themselves. However, it soon stopped being toxic behaviour and turned into straight up criminal activities. I obviously have to preface this section by saying this is all allegedly, but you are all welcome to draw your own conclusions. Hyena was called out for the way they sexualize hyenas in their artwork, often with bikinis, bulges, and always with minimal to no clothing. Animal Jam is targeted towards children aged nine and up. This is absolutely disgusting, but his artwork kept being approved, and it only got worse from there. Screenshot surfaced of Hyene in 2020, whilst being somewhere in the age range of 24 to 31, allegedly grooming and sexualizing a 13 year old in game. As far as I'm aware, no legal action has been taken from either side, and Hyene has still not been banned from Animal Jam. Please just take this as a reminder to stay safe online, and if somebody is making you uncomfortable, block and report them. If you still feel threatened, tell somebody close to you and never be afraid to speak out. The internet is a great place. You just gotta stay away from the wrong ones. JamCon was an in real life event for Animal Jam players and community members to come together and hang out, as well as meet big Animal Jam YouTubers and Jam ambassadors. Hosted in 2016 and again in 2017, JamCon was hosted entirely outside over one day in the summer break where players and fans could meet creators such as Wisteria Moon, Apari, Julian 2 and Snowy Claw, who was the main organiser behind the event and was mentioned earlier as the main name behind Animal Jam Archives, who also started working for Wildworks themselves at some point prior to this. This looks like it was such a wholesome event to bring the community together, just people connected by their love of the same game whilst also educating about a great cause and given the opportunity for lifetime memories meeting their favourite YouTubers. My favourite topic on this iceberg, Pooballs. Now what the hell is Pooballs? Well, Pooballs is actually the censored name I gave this for anyone just viewing the iceberg image. Let me explain. In a 2017 live stream on the official Animal Jam YouTube channel, the streamer accidentally showed some dev files for the game, and some of them had inappropriate names that viewers thought were wholly unacceptable, even behind the scenes, for a game based around kids. There were three main file names that stood out more than the rest, and they were Shitballs1, Shitballs2, and as a weird change, Milky Boo, I meant Shitballs 3. I mean, if you're working at a massively popular kids game, why name the files like that? Like, what even are they for? What could Shitballs possibly mean? In the game, I mean, like, I know what it means, like for me, but that's my business, right? You leave my Shitballs alone. It's pretty well known, and I've already touched on it earlier in this video, that Animal Jam was a project by Wildworks that was partnered with National Geographic from day one. However, one day in 2018, the logo that usually appeared on in-game TV screens was gone. Some items in the shop still remained for a while, but all National Geographic videos were removed from the game, as well as all mention of them in the Animal Jam pages. So they parted ways. That happens. So what? Well, the thing that makes this so strange is that it appears National Geographic extended their contract with Animal Jam in 2014 for another 10 years, meaning it should still be partnered now. 
2014 was almost 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. What possible reason could there be of them only making it four years into their 10 year extension? Whilst there is no concrete explanation, a popular theory at the time was a drastic increase in negative reviews for Animal Jam, particularly on common sense media surrounding the technical issues, the hacks and the unsafe players and practices we covered further up. Whatever it was, it must have been something significant for National Geographic to cut their ties so abruptly. A response was eventually given out by an AJHQ employee after a user emailed them. But to this day, there has still been no public statement, just private emails. The email stated, National Geographic has never been involved with funding, building or publishing Animal Jam. Wildworks has partnered with a number of outside institutions to advance wildlife conservation projects, contribute to our educational materials. Oh, you can almost smell the copy and paste from that response. Almost further cementing that the split was for no reason that was good. But I guess, for now at least, this remains a mystery. Someone called Matt Pat. Because we've got the law. We established the basics earlier on with Myra and Zeos being the gods of Animal Jam, but there have been many retcons and adjustments to the law over Animal Jam's decade plus lifetime. When the development team decided that they wanted to add adventures, story based missions for the players to complete, they had to retcon the law. So initially, as we've already stated, Zeos created Myra, who then fell in love with him and persuaded him to create Jamar. However, after losing Zeos, which is made ambiguous, but it's believed that they broke up, Myra's tears mixed with the darkness of Jamar, creating the pure evil phantoms. However, in order for the story to make sense with the adventures, this was changed to Jamar being an alien planet. Don't worry, we're coming back to this. With all the animals being from Earth, somehow being brought here. Stay tuned. Before a dark portal opened, bringing all the phantoms through, as well as Zeos. I'm just going to throw this out there as it's just come to me right now while writing this script. In the original version, Zeos is captured by the phantoms and taken through a dark portal. In this new version, Zeos comes through a dark portal with the phantoms. Are you seeing what I'm putting down? Animal Jam Multiverse? Like, surely it can't just be lazy writing, right? Right? This is important! This is the lore! <coughs> 2015 saw a huge announcement for a brand new line of Animal Jam toys to be released including plushies and figurines of brand new characters, including Naya, a pink fox. This was such a big deal that this headline the same article that went on to mention Animal Jam originally coming to tablets and phones. This was a big deal. But unfortunately, Enchanted Earth never came to be. Initially planned to release in summer of 2015, it was in May 2016 when Animal Jam toys actually hit the shelves. But these were by a completely different manufacturer, Jazzwares Toys. It's unknown what actually happened to Enchanted Earth. Are the prototype plushies still out there somewhere? Did the deal just fall through or did someone pull out? Did the new characters planned ever find their way into the store or the game? Can I please buy that adorable looking penguin? The only thing that is known, with it still being speculative, is that the Spring Bunny was linked the Enchanted Earth line due to its unique pattern. This may be the only thing from Enchanted Earth that ever made it out. Maybe it was a lost jammer. The final more dark topic on this iceberg is the WLFA news report that was broadcast in 2015. I like the adventures and I like trading and getting gifts on there. I mean, this is really sexually exploiting children. A mother came onto the show to argue that Animal Jam was sexually exploiting children by using suggestive language. This avatar says he pulls his pencil out. Another one says she takes off her bark. 
they're saying that, hey, can I put stick my stick in you? AJHQ reacted to this by creating much stricter filters surrounding these code words. But honestly, it's one of those things where you can't have a free chat option and not expect these horrible things to happen. There's no way to filter every single possibility. However, there is bubble chat that parents can enable, which only allows preset responses to be said by players. Things like this come down to parenting. You can't expect an entire game to be closed down for a handful of awful people. You need to keep an eye on what your kids are doing. Activate the bubble chat. Have them play in a public room if you're that concerned. It's important to keep these games safe for kids, but whilst the moderators have millions of players to account for, you have, in this case, one kid. Keep an eye on your damn kid if you don't want them unzipping their bloody pencil. <laughs> Despite there being over half a dozen spin-offs from Animal Jam, there was actually meant to be more. There are at least two games that never made it through development, but who knows how many were started, but never even made it far enough to be known to the public. The first game was Animal Jam Jr., targeted for an even younger audience, from toddlers all the way up to the age of six. From what can be gathered, this would have played similar to a leapfrog, where it'd focus on teaching the players how to create simple sentences, identifying colors, and presumably differentiating between different animals. There was a great video talking about this in depth, but in the time it's taken me to create this iceberg, it's actually private now. If you have any more information about this, I'd love to hear it down below. The second cancelled game was Animal Jam VR. There is mostly speculation around this game, how it would work, what it would play like, but nothing more ever came from it. Despite there being limited information, however, I believe I've worked out what happened with this game. Around the time this rumour started, Wildworks presented their VR and AR technology at Uden 16, which is also around the time that Animal Jam on the mobile introduced an augmented reality feature. This essentially brought your pets and items into the real world, as seen in FNAF AR and Pokemon Go. It could be that the VR plans changed into AR, or there was just a misunderstanding leading to a false rumour about Animal Jam VR. But the AR edition, regardless, is very cool. It was strangely removed in April 2022, but then suddenly brought back in July of the same year. Why? That's a good question. Especially for the final section of this iceberg. In the earliest stages of development for Animal Jam, the game was going to target preschoolers. This was because the idea behind the game was to capture that fantasy of being your favourite animal that you feel when you are young. However, it was later agreed upon that this is actually more common amongst older children rather than toddlers. There are some early concept art ideas presenting how this game would have looked, which I'm honestly surprised never brought back as baby versions of the animals just like they did in the Moshi Monsters DS games with baby Moshlings. I just think that elephant looks so sad that he never got to exist. Of course, this was tried again later with Animal Jam Jr., but we know how that turned out. I guess it was just never meant to be. I guess it's back to Cocomelon for those younger kids. Chris Johnson was the CEO of Wildworks and co-founder of Animal Jam but parted ways with the company in 2017. Whilst he still holds partial ownership, he does not have any involvement within Animal Jam anymore. Instead, Chris started a brand new studio known as Jam Pack Studios, or ModStorm. ModStorm is a platform allowing for game design specializing in the web free and metaverse space. While still not public, ModStorm appears to be a sandbox tool similar to Roblox level creator that aims to make creating games easy with little to no coding required and for all the games to be cross-platform. The last update I've been able to find on ModStorm is by Chris Johnson at GDC23 which took place in June of this year. However, the showcase is not yet released publicly so it's still a waiting game. ModStorm has been in development for six years. Hopefully, we can see something soon. I told you we weren't going to let that slide. 
So now Jamar is an alien planet that abducts animals from Earth? Okay, that much is fact. So Jamar must be run by a corporation of aliens, right? Why are they stealing them? Is it like Noah's Ark, but Noah's UFO? Not to mention that last month, alien artifacts were re-released into the game. 2020 saw the release of an entire space bundle with command centers, shuttles, spacesuits, even a space tail. And phantoms? Don't they just look alien? Like, if all these animals have been taken to an alien world, what if they're just the bacteria that infects them from being in a foreign environment? Or worse, what if the phantoms are the real inhabitants of Jamar and all these zebras just came in and took over their planet? What the heck? Are we the bad guys? What do we do? This was by far the longest script and recording I've ever done for one of these videos. This is a different iceberg for me because compared to Club Penguin and Bin Weevils, I have very little experience in game with Animal Jam. So I want to give a shout out to the Animal Jam Discord server who did help me out with this iceberg a bit. If you disagree with some of the placings on here, let me know in the comments. I'm always working on these. I'm hoping to make some more icebergs, but this has been super interesting to go through. I'm very excited to edit it. I've been working on this video for about nine months. And honestly, it's just so crazy how much there is to dive into in all of these old kids games. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but they just get more and more interesting. But who would have thought the people behind Animal Jam went into creating an NFT game? Or that the story went from a game about two in love gods to an alien planet? Or that some files in the game were known as poo balls? It's just incredible. So thank you so much if you've made it this far. I'm not going to take any more of your time. Thank you so much, and if there's any iceberg you think I should cover next, I'd really appreciate the advice. Oh, I need a drink. I summon the lost jam. I summon the lost jam. I summon the lost jam. Dude, I hope he finds his jam. Like, what's he gonna have to use otherwise? Like, marmalade?